Hi, welcome to Drag Daddy Productions' Romeo and Juliet, an all-drag Shakespearean event. Drag Daddy Productions produces shows and events with a strong presence of drag performance and or alternative storytelling. Our shows will always strive to promote diversity, equality, fairness, and love. In the age of COVID-19, not even a pandemic can keep artists down. Working with actors from all across the country. Drag Daddy Productions is excited to share our first digitally streamed production with you. We hope to offer a little escape from the heaviness of the world with this unique all drag production of the greatest love story ever told. Stay safe, stay healthy, and take care of those around you. And always, Team Capula. Thanks again for coming to this one of a kind Shakespearean all drag event. We have performers from all across the country volunteering their time for this project. You may have seen their Venmo handles before the show, and you'll see them again after. So please, tip a king or queen in the age of COVID-19. Enjoy the show. Households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Whose misadventured piteous overthrows do with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of the death-crossed love and the continuance of their parents' rage. Which, but their children's end, naught could remove, is now the two hours' traffic of our stage. The which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss? Our toils shall strive to mend. The quarrel is between our masters and us their men. Tis all one. I will show myself to be a tyrant. After I have fought with the men, I will be cruel with the maids and cut off their heads. The heads of the maids? Aye, the heads of the maids, or their maiden heads. Take it in whatever sense thou wilt. They must take it as they sense they feel it. Me they shall feel while I am able to stand, and tis known I am a pretty piece of flesh. Tis well there art now fish. If thou hadst, thou hadst been poor John. Look here, draw your tool. Here come a few of the house of Montague. My naked weapon is out. Quarrel, I will back thee. How? Turn and flee. Fear me not. No, Mary, I fear thee. Let us take the law on our sides. Let them begin it. I will frown as I pass by and let them take it as they list. Nay, as they dare, I will bite my thumb at them, which is a disgrace to them if they should bear it. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Is the law on our side if I say I? No. No, sir. I do not bite my thumb at you, sir. But I do bite my thumb. Do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir? No, sir. If you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. No, better. Well, sir. Stay better. Here comes a few of our master's kinsmen. Yes, better, sir. Oh, 
draw if you be men. Gregory, remember your swashing blow. Pot, fools! Put up your swords, you know not what you do. What? Drawn among the heartless hides. Turn thee, Benvolia. Look on thy death. We do but keep the peace. Put up thy sword. You'll manage to part these men with me. What? Draw on and talk of peace. I hate the word, as I hate hell, all Montagues, and thee. Have at thee, coward! Clubs, bills, and partisans, strike! Beat them down! Down with the Capulets! Down with the Montagues! A long sword, ho! A crutch, a crutch! Why call you for a sword? My sword is safe. Old Montagues would come and forge his blade inside of me. Thou villain Capulet, hold me not! Let me go! Thou shalt not take a foot to seek a foe! Rebellious subjects, enemies to peace, profaners of this neighbor stained steel, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground and hear the scent of your moved prince. Three civil brawls bred of an airy word by thee, old Capulet and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets. If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. For this time, all the rest depart away. You, Capulet, shall go along with me. And Montague, come you this afternoon to know our further pleasure in this case to Old Freetown, our common judgment place. Once more, on pain of death, all men depart. Who said this quarrel knew approach? Speak, nephew, were you by when it began? Here were the servants of your adversary and yours, close fighting ere I did approach while we were interchanging thrusts and blows, came more and more and fought part on part till the prince came, parted either part. Oh, where is Romeo? Saw you him today? Right glad I am that he was not at this fray. Madam, an hour before the worshipped sun peered forth the golden window of the east, a troubled mind drave me to walk abroad, where underneath the grove of sycamore that westward rooteth from the city side, so early rocking did I see your son. Towards him I made, but he was ware of me. Many a morning hath he there been, with tears augmenting the fresh morning dew. Black and portentous must his humor prove, unless good counsel may the cause remove. My uh, noble uncle, do you know the cause? Could we but learn from whence his sorrows grow, we would willingly give cure as no. See where he comes. So please, you step aside. I'll know his grievance or be much denied. <clears throat> I would thou wert so happy by thy stay. Come to your true shrift. Come, madam, let's away. <sighs> Good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? Oh, but new struck nine. Oh, me, sad hours seem long. Was that my father that went hence so fast? Oh, it was. <sighs> what sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In love. Out of love? <clears throat> Out of favor where I am in love. Oh, alas, that love so gentle in his views should be so tyrannous and rough in proof. Alas, that love whose view is muffled still should without eye see pathways to his ill. <sighs> Where shall we dine? Oh, me, what fray was here? Yet tell me not, for I have heard it all. Here's much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then, O oh, brawling love, O oh, loving hate, O oh, anything of nothing first create? <laughs> Dost thou not laugh? No, cause I'd rather weep. Good heart at what? At thy good heart's oppression. Why such is love's transgression. Griefs of mine own lie heavy in my breast, which thou wilt propagate to have it pressed with more of thine. This love that thou hast shown doth add more grief to too much of mine own. Farewell, my cuz. Soft, I will go along. And if you leave me so, you do me wrong. <laughs> I am 
have lost myself. I am not here. This is not Romeo. He's some other where. Tell me in sadness, who is it that you love? What, shall I groan and tell thee? Groan? Why no? But sadly, tell me who. Bid a sick man in sadness make his will. A word he'll urge to one that is so ill. In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. <laughs> I aim so near when I suppose you loved. A right good mark, man, and she's fair, I love. A right fair mark, fair cuz, is soonest hit. Well, in that hit you miss, she'll be not hit with Cupid's arrow, she hath Dean's wit. Hmm, be ruled by me. Forget to think on her. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes. Examine other beauties. Mm -hmm. Show me a mistress that is passing fair. What doth her beauty serve but as a note where I may read who passed that passing fair? Farewell, thou canst not teach me to forget. Oh, I'll pay that doctrine or else die in debt. Montague is bound so well as I in penalty alike, and tis not hard to think for men so old as we can't keep the peace. Of honorable reckoning are you both, and pity tis you lived at odds so long. But now, my lord, what say you to my suit? What say, nor what I said before? My child is but a stranger to this world. She hath not seen the change of fourteen years. Let two more summers wither in their pride, ere we may think her right to be a bride. Younger than she, our happy mother's maid. <laughs> ah, and too soon marred are those so early made. The earth hath swallowed all my hopes, but she, she's the hopeful lady of my earth. But woo her, gentle Paris, get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part, and she agree within the scope of her choice lies my consent and fair according voice. This night I hold an old accustomed feast, whereto I have invited many a guest of limping winter treads, even such delight among as fresh wool female buds shall you this night inherit at my house, hear all, all see, and like her most whose merit shall be which on more view of many mind being one may stand in number, though reckoning in none. Come, go with me. Go, sirrah, trudge about through fair Verona, find those persons out whose names are written there, and to them say, my house and welcome on their pleasure stay. <laughs> As today it may happen that a party guest be found, I've got a little list, I've got a little list of society elitists who might well be around and who never would be missed, who never would be missed. There's the pestilential nuisances who write for autographs, all people who have flabby hands and irritating laughs, all children who are up in dates and floor you with them flat, all persons who in shaking hands shake hands with you like that, and all third persons who on spoiling tete-a-tetes insist, I've got a little list and let none of them be missed. I've got them on the list, I've got them on the list, and they'll none of them be missed. Yes, they'll none of them be missed. There's the banjo serenader and the others of his race, and the piano organist. Oh, I've got him on the list. And the people who eat peppermint and puff it in your face. They never would be missed. They never would be missed. Then the idiot who praises with an enthusiasm. To tone. All centuries but this and every country but his own. And the lady from the provinces who dresses like a guy and who doesn't think she dances but would rather like to try. And the singular anomaly, the lady novelist, I don't think she'd be missed. 
I'm sure she'd not be missed. I've got them on the list. I've got them on the list. And I don't think they'll be missed. Yes, I'm sure they'll not be missed. And that Nissy Prissy nuisance from just now is rather ripe. The judicial humor is. I've got him on the list. All the funny fellows, comic men, and clowns of private life. They did none of them be missed. They did none of them be missed. And apologetic statesmen of a compromising kind, such as what do you call them? Think of a bob and like, never mind. And, and what's his name? And you know who? The task of filling in the blanks, I'd leave up to you. But it really doesn't matter whom you put upon the list, for they'd none of them be missed. They'd none of them be missed. You may put them on the list. You may put them on the list. And they'll none of them be missed. Yes, they'll none of them be missed. <sighs> Find out whose names are written here. <laughs> I, I, I must to the learned uh, in good time. Take thou some new infection to thy eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Why, Romeo, why art thou mad? Mad, but bound more than a madman is. Shut up in prison, kept without my food, whipped and tormented, and... <laughs> Good end, good fellow. Ah, uh, good again. I pray you, sir, can you read? It's very dark. I, mine own fortune in my misery. Perhaps you have learned it without book, but, but I pray thee, can you read anything you see? Aye, if I know the letters and the language. Ah, uh, yes, see, uh, honestly, rest you merry. Uh, stay, fellow, I can read. <clears throat> The master of the house of Capulet, if you be not one of the Montagues, beseech ye, come and crush a cup of wine. Rest you marry. Oh, oh why, why, thank you, sir. Tis an invitation meant for us, indeed. <clears throat> At this same ancient feast of Capulet sups the fair Rosaline, whom thou so lovest, with all the admired beauties of Verona. Go thither, and with unattainted eye compare her face with some I shall show, and I shall make thee think thy salon a crow. I'll go along, no such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in splendor of mine own. Okay. My daughter. Now, my, my lady, lady made it twelve year old, I made her come. What lamb? What lady bird? God forbid. Where's this girl? What Juliet? How now? Who calls? Your mother. Madam, I am here. What is your will? This is the matter. Nurse, give leave a while. Uh, we must talk in secrets. Nurse! Come back again, I have remembered me. Thou here our counsel. Thou knowest my daughter's of a pretty age. Faith, I can tell her age unto an hour. Enough of this, I pray thee hold thy peace. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? It is an honor that I dream not of. An honor! Were not I thine only nurse, I would say thou had sucked wisdom from thy teat. Well, think of marriage now. Younger than you here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my count, I was your mother much upon these years that you are now a maid. Thus then in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. Man, young lady, young lady. He's such a man as all the world. Why, he's a man of wax. Verona, summer hath not such a flower. He's a flower, in faith, a very flower. What say you? Can you love the gentleman? 
This night you shall behold him at our feast. Read o'er the volume of young Paris face and find delight writ there with beauty's pen. Examine every married lineament and see how one another lends content. And what obscured in this fair volume lies find written in the margent of his eyes, the precious book of love, the unbound lover. Speak briefly, can you like a Paris love? I'll look to like, if looking liking move, but no more deep will I indart mine eye than your consent gives strength to make it fly. Madam, the guests have come. Supper is served up. You called, my young lady asked for. And the nurse has cursed in the pantry and everything in extremity. And I am hence to wait. <clears throat> I beseech thee, madam, follow hence. We follow thee. Juliet, the county stays. Go, girl, seek happy days to happy nights. This speech be spoke for our excuse. Give me a torch. I'm not for this ambling, but being heavy, I will bear the light. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. Not I, believe me. You have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead. So stakes me to the ground, I cannot move. You are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above a common bound. I am too sore and pierced with a shaft to soar with his light feathers, and so bound I cannot bound a pitch above dull woe. Under love's heavy burden do I sink. And to sink in it should you burden love, too great oppression for a tender thing. Is love a tender thing? It is too rough, too rude, too boisterous, and it pricks like a thorn. If love be rough with you, be rough with love. Mm. Prick love for pricking, and you beat love down. <laughs> Come, we burn daylight. Oh, but tis no wit to go. Why, may one ask? You dreamed a dream tonight. And so did I. Well, what was yours? That dreamers often lie. <laughs> In bed asleep while they do dream things true. Oh. Then I see Queen Mab has been with you. <laughs> she is the fairy's midwife, and she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn with a team of little athletes athwart men's noses as they lie asleep. Her chariot is an empty hazelnut, and in this state she gallops night by night through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love. Or courtiers' knees that dream on curtsy straight, or lawyers' fingers who straight dream on fees, or ladies' lips who straight on kisses dream. Which oft the angry man with blisters plagues, because their breaths with sweet meats tainted are. Sometimes she driveth o'er a soldier's neck, and then dreams he cutting for the throats. A breeches, ambuscados, Spanish blades, drums in his ears at which he starts and wakes in being this right and swears a prayer to him and sleeps again. This is that very man that plates the manes of horses in the night. This is the hag when maids lie on their backs that presses them and learns them first to bear. This is the shame. Peace, peace, Mercutio, peace. You talkst of nothing. <laughs> I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain begot of nothing but vain fantasies, which is as thin a substance as the air and more inconstant than the wind who woos. This wind you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done and we shall come to wait. I fear too early. 
For my mind may give some consequence, yet hanging in the star shall bitterly begin his fearful date with this night's revels and expire the term of a despised life close in my breast by some vile forfeit of untimely death. That which doth enrich the hand of yonder knight. Oh, I, I, I know not, sir. <laughs> oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. Mm. She hangs upon the cheek of night. <laughs> Did my heart love till now, for swear its sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. This, by his voice, should be a Montague. No, I stuck an honor of my kin. To strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. Why, how now, kinsman? What forced on you so? Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe, a, a villain, hither come in scorn to scorn our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is it? The villain Romeo. Content thee, gentle cause. 
leave him alone. He bears him like a portly gentleman. And to say the truth, Verona brags of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not for all the wealth of the town here in my house do him disparagement. Therefore, be patient, take no note of him. It is my will for if, which if thou which respect, show a fair presence and put off these frowns and ill beseeming semblance for such a feast. It fits when such a villain is a guest, I'll not endure it. He shall be endured. Why, uncle, tis a shame. Go to, go to. Be quiet, or more light, more light. For shame, I'll make you quiet. What, cheerly, my hearts? Oh, yes. Patience perforce with willful collar meeting makes my heart tremble with their different greeting. I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall, now seeming sweet, convert to bitterest gall. If I profane with my unworthiest hands this holy shrine the gentle fine is this, my lips two blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth at rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saint lips and holy palmers too? I pilgrim lips, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do, they pray. Grant thou less faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Then move not while my prayer's effect I take. Thus from my lips by yours my sin is purged. <sighs> Then have my lips the sin that they have took. Sin from my lips? Oh, trespass sweetly urge. Give me my sin again. You kiss by the book. <laughs> Madam, your mother craves a word with you. What is her mother? Mary Bachelor, her mother is the lady of this house, and a good lady, and wise, and virtuous. I nursed her daughter that you talked with all. Is she a Capulet? Oh dear, account my life's is my foe's debt. Away! Be kind. This sport is at its best. Ay, so I fear the more is my unrest. Come hither, nurse. What is yon gentleman? His name is Romeo and a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. My only love sprung from my only hate. Too early seen unknown, and known too late. Prodigious birth of love it is to me, that I must love a loathed enemy. Now old desire doth in his deathbed lie, and young affection gapes to be his heir. That fair for which love groaned for and would die, with tender Juliet matched, is now not fair. Now Romeo is beloved and loves again, alike betwitched by the charm of looks, but to his foe suppose that he must complain, and she steal love sweet bait from fearful hooks. Being held a foe, he may not have access to breathe such vows as lovers used to swear. And she has much in love, her means much less, to meet her new beloved anywhere. But passion lends them power. Time means to meet. Tempering extremities with extreme sweet. Can I go forward when my heart is here? Turn back, dull earth, and find thy center out. Romeo! My cousin Romeo! Oh. 
Oh, he is wise, and on my lie, hath stolen him home to bed. Oh, he ran this way and leapt over this orchard wall. Call oh, good Mercutio. Nay, I'll conjure too. Romeo, humors, madman, passion, oh, other. And if he hear thee, thou wilt anger him. Come. He hath hid himself among these trees to be consorted with the humorous knight. Blind is his love, and best befits the dark. If love be blind, love cannot hit the mark. <laughs> Just a god. Soft. What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou her maid art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious, her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it, cast it off. It is my lady. Oh, <laughs> it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. I am too bold, <laughs> tis not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven having some business do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes were there, they in her head? Brightness of her cheek would shame those stars. As daylight doth a lamp. Her eyes in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright that Birds would sing and think it were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, 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 that I were a glove upon that hand that I might touch that cheek. I mean, she speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel, for thou art as glorious to this night being o'er my head as is a winged messenger of heaven unto the white upturned wondering eyes. Mortals that fall back to gaze on him when he bestrides the lazy pacing clouds and sails upon the bosom of the air. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. Wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Oh, shall I hear more? Shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is thy enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo, doth thy name. And for that name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. I take thee at thy word. Call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth, I never will be Romeo. What man art thou that thus bescreened in night, so stumblest on my counsel? Uh, by a name I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself because it is an enemy to thee. Had I it written, I would tear the word. My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of that tongue's utterance, yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo? And a Montague? Neither, fair saint, if either thee dislike. How camest thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb, and the place death, considering who thou art, if any of my kinsmen find thee here. 
with love's light wings did I o'er perch these walls, for stony limits cannot hold love out, and what love can do that dares love attempt. Therefore, thy kinsmen are no let to me. Oh, if they do see thee, they will murder thee. Alack, there lies more peril in thine eye than twenty of their swords. Look thou but sweet, and I am proof against their enmity. Oh, I would not for the world they saw thee here. I have knights cloak to hide me from their sight, and but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than death prorogued wanting of thy love. By whose discretion foundst thou out this place? By love, who first did prompt me to inquire. He lent me counsel and I lent him eyes. I am no pilot, yet wert thou as far as that vast shore washed with the farthest sea, I would adventure for such merchandise. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face, else would a maiden blush but paint my cheek for that which thou hast heard me speak tonight. Fain would I dwell on form, fain. They deny what I have spoke, but farewell compliment. Dost thou love me? Oh, I know thou wilt say I, and I will take thy word. Yet if thou swearest, thou mayst prove false. At lovers' perjuries, they say Jove laughs. <gasps> Gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Or if thou thinkest I am too quickly won, I will frown and be perverse and say thee nay. So thou wilt woo, <laughs> but else not for the world. In truth, fair Montague, I am too fond. And thou mayst think my behavior light, but trust me, gentlemen, I'll prove more true than those that have more cunning to be strange. I should have been more strange, I must confess, but that thou overheardst ere I was ware, my true love's passion. Therefore pardon me, and do not impute this yielding to light love, which the dark night hath so discovered. Lady, by... Yonder blessed moon, I swear that the tips with silver are all these fruit tree tops and- Oh, swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon, that monthly changes in her circled orb, lest that thy love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all. Or, if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. If my heart's dear love. Well, do not swear. Although I joy in thee, I have no joy of this contract tonight. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden, too like the lightning, which doth cease to be ere one can say it lightens. <laughs> Sweet, good night. This bud of love by summer's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night, good night. <laughs> as sweet repose and rest come to thy heart as that within my breast. Oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. Oh, I gave thee mine before thou didst request it, and yet I would it were to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it? For what purpose, love? But to be frank and give it thee again, and yet I wish but for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love as deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. Madam? Oh, I hear some noise within. Dear love, adieu. Anon, good nurse. Uh, sweet Montague, be true. Stay but a little, I will come again. Blessed, blessed night! I am afeard. Being a knight, all this is but a dream, too flattering sweet to be substantial. Three words, Sir Romeo, and, and good night indeed. If that thy bent of love be honorable, thy purpose marriage, send me word tomorrow by one that I'll procure to come to thee, where and what time thou wilt perform the right, and all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Madam. Uh, but I come anon, but if thou meanst not well, I do beseech Adam. thee. By and by I come to cease thy suit and leave me to my grief. <laughs> Tomorrow will I send. I'll drive my soul. A thousand times, good night. <laughs> A thousand times the worse to want thy light. <laughs> mm.
Now, <clears throat> ere the sun advanced his burning eye, the day to cheer and night's dank dew to drink, Try, I must upfill this austere cage of ours with baleful weeds and precious juice flowers. The earth that nature's mother is her tomb, what was her burying grave that is her womb, <laughs> and from her womb children of diverse kind we sucking on her natural bosom find that many for virtues excellent, none but some yet all different. Oh, Mickle. The powerful grace that finds and herbs, plants, and their true qualities. Good morrow, Father. <coughs> Benedict. <coughs> what surly tongue so <coughs> sweet saluteth me, young son? It, it arbors a distempered head so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Care keeps his watch in every old man's eye, for where care lodges, sleep will never lie. But where unbruised youth with unstuffed brain doth couch his limbs there, golden sleep doth reign. Therefore, thy earliness doth me assure thou art uproused by some distemperature. Or, if not so, and here I hit it right, Young Romeo hath not been to bed tonight. Oh, the last is true. The sweeter rest was mine. God pardon sin. Was that with Rosaline? With Rosaline? My ghostly father, no. I have forgot that name, and that name's woe. Ah, that is my good son. But where hath thou been then? Be plain, good son, and homely in thy shrift. Riddling confessions find but riddling Plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on her, so hers is set on mine. And all combine, save what thou must combine. But holy marriage! When and where and how we met, we wooed and made exchange of vow. I'll tell thee as we pass, but this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Holy St. Francis, what a change is here. Rosaline, who thou just loved so dear, so soon forsaken. Young men's love lies there, not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. Thou tights me off for loving Rosaline. For doting, not for loving, pupil mine. And that's me very love. Not in a grave to lay one in, another out to have. I pray thee, chide not. She whom I love now doth grace for grace and love for love allow. The other did not so. Ah, oh, well, she knew well. Thy love did read by rote and could not spell. And, but come, young waverer, come with me. In one respect, I'll thy assistant be, for this alliance may so happy prove to Turn your household's rancor to pure love. Oh, let us hence. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, I stand on sudden haste. <laughs> Wisely and slow, they stumble that run fast. <laughs> Where the devil should this Romeo be? Came he not home tonight? Ah, uh, to his father's. I spoke with his man. Oh, that same pale, hard-hearted wench that Rosaline torments him so that he will sure run mad. Oh, Timult, the kinsman of old Capulet, hath sent a letter to his father's house. A challenge on my life. Romeo will answer it. I, man that can write, may answer a letter. Nay, he will answer the letter's master, how he dares being dared. <laughs> Alas, poor Romeo, he is already dead, stabbed with a white wench's black eye, shot through the ear with a love song, mm. the very pin of his heart cleft with a blind bow boy's butt shaft. <laughs> and is he man to encounter Tybalt? Oh, why, what is Tybalt? Oh, more than Prince of Cats, I can tell you. Oh, oh, he is the courageous captain of compliments. A duelist, a duelist, a gentleman of the very 
first house of the first and second cause. Ah, the immortal Posado, oh. the Punto Reverso. Oh. I, the what? You know, the parks of such antic, lifting, affecting, fantasticals, these new tuners of accent. Oh. <clears throat> Here comes Romeo. Oh, here comes Romeo. You gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Good morrow to you both. What counterfeit did I give you? The slip, sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? Pardon, good Mercutio. My business was great. And in such a case as mine, a man may strain courtesy. A sail, a sail. Do, do, a shirt and a smock. Peter. Uh, anon. My fan, Peter. Good Peter, to hide her face, for her fan's the fairer face. <laughs> God ye good morrow, gentlemen. God ye good den, fair gentle Is woman. Is it Tis no less, I tell you, for the body hand of the dial is now upon the prick. Oh, out upon you, what a man you are. One gentlewoman that God hath made for himself to mar. And my trophy is well said for himself to mar, quoth it. Gentlemen, can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? I can tell you, but young Romeo will be older when you have found him than he was when you sought him. I'm the youngest of that name for fault of a worse. You say well. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst well. Very well took in faith. Wisely, wisely. <laughs> if you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. Oh, she will indict him to some supper. A bod, a bod, a bod. <laughs> so ho. What hast thou found? No hair, sir. Unless a hair, sir, in a Lenten pie, that is something stale and whore ere it be spent. <clears throat> oh, an old hair whore, an old hair whore is very good meat in Lent, but a hair that is a whore is too much for a score when it whores ere it be spent. <laughs> Romeo, will you come to your father's house? We'll to dinner thither. I will follow you. Farewell, ancient lady. Farewell, lady, lady, lady. Hey, you, sir, a word. And as I told you, my young lady bade me inquire you out. What she bade me say, I will keep to myself. But first, let me tell ye, if you should lead her into a fool's paradise, as they say, it were a very gross kind of behavior, as they say. For the gentlewoman is young, and therefore, if you should deal double with her, truly it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman, and a very weak feeling. Nurse, commend me to thy lady and mistress. I protest unto- In heart and in faith, I will tell her as much. Oh, she will be a joyful woman. Now tell her, nurse, thou dost not mark me. I will tell her, sir, that you do protest, which, as I take it, is a gentlemanlike offer. Bid her devise some means to come to shrift this afternoon, and there she shall, at Friar Lawrence's cell, be shrived and married. This afternoon, sir. Well, she shall be there. Commend me to thy lady. A thousand times. <laughs> Peter! Oh, non. Peter, take my fan and go before and apace. struck nine when I did send the nurse. In half an hour she promised to return. Perchance she cannot meet him. That's not so. Oh, now is the sun upon the highmost hill of this day's journey, and from nine till twelve is three long hours, yet she is not come. Oh, God, she comes! Uh, oh, honey nurse, what news? Oh, send thy man away. Peter, stay at the gate. <sighs> now, good, sweet nurse, Oh, Lord, why looks thou so sad? Though news be sad, yet tell them merrily. If good, thou shames the music of sweet news by playing it to me so sour a face. 
I am a weary. Give me leave a while. <laughs> How my bones ache. What a jaunt I have had. Oh, I would thou hadst my bones and I thy news. Nay, come, I pray thee, speak. Uh, good, good. Yes, what place? Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath when thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath? The excuse uh, thou dost make in this delay is longer than the tale thou dost excuse. Is thy news good or bad? Answer to that. Say either, and I'll stay the circumstance. Let me be satisfied. Good well, you have made a simple choice. You know not how to choose a man. Romeo. No, not he. Though his face be better than any man's. Yet his leg excels all men's, and for a hand, and a foot, and a body, though they be not talked on, yet they pass the pair. He is not the flower of courtesy, but I'll warrant him as gentle as a lamb. Go thy ways, wench, serve God. What, have you dined at home? No, no, uh, but all this did I know before. Uh, what says he of our marriage? What of that? Lord, oh, how my head aches. Ah, oh, what a head have I beat as I would fall in 20 pieces. My back on the other side. Oh, my back, my back. Beshrew your sending me out to catch my death while jaunting up and down. If faith, I am sorry that thou art not well. Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, tell me what says my love. Your love says, uh -huh. like an honest gentleman, mm -hmm. courteous and a kind yes. and a handsome and I want a virtue. Where is your mother? Where's my mother? Why she is within, where should she be? How oddly thou repliest. Your love says like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Oh, well, God's lady, dear, are you so hot, Mary. <laughs> Come up, I trow. Is this the poultice for my aching bones? It's forward to your messages yourself. Oh, here's such a coil. Come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to Shrift today? I have. Then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. Oh, oh I'll to dinner, hie you to the cell. Hi to high fortune, honest nurse, farewell. So smile the heavens upon this holy act that after hours with sorrow chide us not. Here comes the lady. Oh, so light of foot will ne'er wear out the everlasting flint. A lover may bestride the gossamer that idles in the wanton summer air and yet not fall. So light is vanity. Good even to my ghostly confessor. Romeo shall thank thee, daughter, for us both. As much to him, else his thanks too much. <laughs> ah, Juliet. If the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine, and that thy skill be more to blazon it, then sweeten with thy breath this neighbor air, and let rich music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness that both receive in either by this dear encounter. Conceit more rich in matter than in words brags of his substance, not of ornament. They are but beggars that can count their worth, but my love is is my true love is grown to such excess I cannot sum up some of half my wealth. <laughs> come, come with me and we will make short work for by your leaves you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporate two, one. Mercutio, let's retire. The day is hot, the Capulet's abroad, and if we meet, we shall not escape a brawl. Now these hot days is the mad blood stirring. 
Thou art like one of those fellows, that when he enters the confines of a tavern, claps me a sword upon the table and says, God, send me no need of thee. And by the operation of the second cup, draws it on the drawer when indeed there is no need. Oh, am I like such a fellow? By my head. Here come the Capulets. By my heel. I care not. Gentlemen, good Dan, a word with one of you. And but one word with one of us? Couple it with something. Make it a word and a blow. You shall find me apt enough to that, sir, and you give me occasion. Could you not take some occasion without giving? Cuscio, how consorts with Romeo? Consort? <laughs> what? Dost thou make us minstrels? And make minstrels of us look to hear nothing but discords? Here is my fiddlestick. Here is that shall make you dance. Soons consort? We talk here in the public haunt of men. Either withdraw to some private place and reason coldly of your grievances or else depart. Here all eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes were made to look and let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure I. Wait, peace be with you. Here comes my man. Romeo. Hate I bear for thee can afford no greater term than this. Thou art a villain. Oh. Hibbled, the reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain, am I none? Therefore, farewell, I see thou know'st me not. Boy, this does not excuse the injury that thou hast done to me. Therefore, turn and draw. I do protest I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise, till thou shalt know the reason of my love, and so, good Capulet, which name I tender as dearly as mine own, be satisfied. Oh, no, calm, dishonorable, vile submission. Fala staccato carries it away. Tibble, you rat catcher, will you walk? What would thou have with me? Good king of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives. I am for you. A gentle Mercutio, put thy rapier up. Come, sir, your Posado. <laughs> Good Mercutio. <laughs> I am hurt. <laughs> A plague on both your houses. I am spent. Is he gone and hath nothing? What art thou hurt? I, I, <clears throat> A scratch, scratch, Mary. He, he, tis enough. Courage, man, the hurt cannot be much. Uh, no, tis not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door. <laughs> but tis enough, twill serve. Ask for me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave man. I am peppered, I warrant, for this world. <laughs> you have plague on both your houses. <laughs> a dog, a rat, a mouse, a cat, to scratch a man to death. A braggart, a, a rogue, a villain that fights by the book of arithmetic. Why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. I thought all for the best. To help me into some house, Benvolio, or I shall faint. A plague on both your houses. They have made worms meat of me. I have it, and soundly too. Your houses. Oh, sweet Juliet. The beauty hath made me effeminate, and in my temper softened valor steel. Oh, Romeo! Romeo! <laughs> Brave Mercutio is dead. All this day's black fate on war days doth depend. This but begins the woe others must end. Here comes the furious Tybalt back again. Alive in triumph and Mercutio slain, away to heaven, respective lenity and fire-eyed fury be my, my conduct now. 
Now, Tybalt, take the villain back again that late now gavest me for Mercutio's soul is but a little way above our heads, staying for thine to keep him company. Either thou or I, or both must go with him. A wretched boy that did consorts in here shall win it him hence. This shall determine that! Tybalt, that murderer, which way ran he? There lies that Tybalt. Up, sir. Go with me. I charge thee in the prince's name. Obey. Where are the vile beginners of this fray? Noble prince, I, I can discover all. The unlucky manage of this fatal brawl. There lies the man slain by young Romeo that slew thy kinsman, brave Mercutio. Tybalt, my cousin, oh, my brother's child, oh, prince, oh, cousin, husband, oh, the blood is spilt, oh, my dear kinsman, prince. As thou art true for blood of ours, shed blood of Montague. Oh, cousin, cousin. Benvolio, who began this bloody fray? Tybalt, with piercing steel at bold Mercutio's breast did lay. Tybalt, here slain, whom Romeo's hand did slay. This is the truth, or else let Benvolio die. He is a kinsman to the Montague. Affection makes him false, he speaks not true. I beg for justice, which thou, prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt, Romeo must not live. Romeo slew him, he slew Mercutio, who now the price of his dear blood doth owe. Not Romeo, prince, he was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes what the law should end, the life of Tybalt. And for that offense, Immediately we do exile him hence.
come night. Come, Romeo, come thou day in night, for thou wilt lie upon the wings of night whiter than new snow on a raven's back. Come, gentle night, come loving black-browed night. Give me my Romeo. And when he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars, and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. Oh, here comes my nurse, and she brings news. <laughs> now, nurse, what news? Oh, well a day, he's dead. <laughs> He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. We are undone, lady, we are undone. Oh, lack the day, he's gone, he's killed, he's dead. Could heaven be so envious? Romeo can, though heaven cannot. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. Oh, whoever would have thought it, Romeo. What devil art thou that dost torment me thus? I saw the wound, I saw it with mine eyes, God. The mark here on his manly breast. Oh, break my heart. Poor bankrupt, break at once. Oh, to prison eyes, ne'er look on liberty. Tybalt. Oh, Tybalt, the best friend I had. What storm is this that blows so contrary? Is Romeo slaughtered and is Tybalt dead? Tybalt is gone and Romeo banished. Romeo that killed him, he is banished. Oh, God. Did Romeo's hand shed Tybalt's blood? It did. It did. Alas, the day it did. These grief, woes, these sorrows make me old. Shame come to Romeo. Blistered be thy tongue for such a wish. He was not born to shame. Upon his brow, shame is a shame to sit. But tis a throne where honor may be crowned, so monarch of the universal earth. Oh, what a beast was I to chide at him. Will you speak well of him that killed your cousin? Shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? My husband lives, that Tybalt would have slain, and Tybalt's dead, that would have slain my husband. All slain, all dead. Romeo is banished. Find you to your chamber. I'll find Romeo to comfort you. I will find where he is. I'll to him, he is hid at Lauren's cell. And bid him come to take his last farewell. <sighs> Romeo, come forth. Come forth, thou fearful man. Affliction is enamored of thy parts, and thou art wedded to calamity. Father, what news? What is the prince's doom? Gentler judgment vanished from his lips, not body's death, but body's banishment. Banishment? Be merciful, say death, for exile hath more terror in his look, much more than death. Do not say banishment. When from Verona art thou banished. Be patient. The world is broad and wide. <laughs> No world without Verona walls. A deadly sin, rude unthankfulness. Thy fault our law calls death. But the kind prince taking thy part hath rushed aside the law and turned that black word death to banishment. This is dear mercy and thou ceased it not. Oh. Arise, one call. Could Romeo hide thyself? Not I, unless the breath of hearts it groans mist-like enfold me from the search of eyes. Hark how they knock. Who's there? Romeo, arise. Who knocks so hard? Whence come you? What's your will? Let me come in and you shall know my errand. I come to Lady Juliet to bring the good Romeo hence. Welcome then. Uh. Holy Friar. Uh, tell me, Holy Friar, where is my lady's lord? Where's Romeo? There, on the ground, by his own tears made drunk. Nurse, speakest thou of Juliet, how is it with her? Uh, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps. I 
from Lady Juliet. I come to bring Romeo hence. Go, get thee to thy love, as was decreed. Send her chamber hence and comfort her. But look, thou stays not till the watch be set, for when then thou canst not be passed to Mantua, where thou shalt live till we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than that went forth in lamentation. Go before, nurse, commend me to thy lady and bid her hasten all the house to bed, which heavy sorrow is making them at it. Romeo is coming. Things have fallen out, sir, and so unluckily that we've We've had no time to move our daughter. Look you, she loved her kinsman Tybalt dearly, and so did I. Well, we were all born to die. Tis very late, she'll not come down tonight. I promise you, but for your company, I would have been a better an hour ago. These times of war will afford no time to woo. Madam, good night. Commend me to your daughter. I will, and know her mind early tomorrow. Tonight she is mewed up to her heaviness. Sir Paris, I will make a desperate tender of my child's love. I think she will be ruled in all respects by me. Nay, more, I doubt it not. Wife, go you to her ere you go to bed. Acquaint her here of my son Paris's love, and bid her mark you me on Thursday. Tell her she shall be married to this noble earl. My lord, I, I would that Thursday were tomorrow. Well, get you gone, no Thursday be it then. Go you to Juliet ere you go to bed. Prepare her wife against this wedding day. Farewell, my lord. <laughs> Wilt thou be gone? It is not yet near day. It was the nightingale and not the lark that pierced the fearful hollow of thine ear. Nightly she sings on yon pomegranate tree. Believe me, love, it was the nightingale. It was the lark, the herald of the morn, no nightingale. Look, love, what envious streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east. Night's candles are burnt out, and jocund day stands tiptoes on the misty mountain tops. I must be gone and live or stay and die. Yon light is not daylight. I know it, I. It is some meteor that the sun exhales to be to thee this night a torchbearer and light thee on thy way to Mantua. Therefore stay yet, thou needst not to be gone. Let me be taken, let me be put to death. I am content so thou wilt have it so. I have more care to stay than will to go. Come death and welcome, Juliet wills it so. <laughs> How's my soul? Let's talk, it is not day. It is, it is. <laughs> Hi hence, be gone, away. Oh, now be gone. More light and light it grows. More light and light, more dark and dark our woes. Madam. Nurse. Your lady mother is coming to your chamber. Oh. Broke, be wary, look about. Then window, let day in and let life out. Farewell, farewell, one kiss and I'll descend. Art thou gone so, love, lord, I, husband, friend. I must hear from thee every day in the hour, for in a minute there are many days. Oh, by this count, I shall be much in years ere I again behold my Romeo. <laughs> Farewell. I will omit no opportunity that may convey my greetings love to thee. Oh, thinkest thou we shall ever meet again? I doubt it not. And all these all these discourses in our time to come. Oh God, I have an ill divining soul. Methinks I see thee now thou art below as one dead in the bottom of a tomb. Either my eyesight fails or thou look'st pale. And trust me, love, in my eye so do you. 
Dry sorrow drinks our blood. Adieu. Adieu. Oh. Oh, fortune, fortune. All men call thee fickle. If thou art fickle, what, what dost thou with him that is renowned for faith? Be fickle, fortune, for then I hope thou wilt not keep him long, but send him back. Oh, daughter, are you up? Who is that calls? Is it my lady mother? Is she not down so late or up so early? What unaccustomed cause procures her hither? Why, how now, Juliet? Madam, I am not well. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death? What, wilt thou wash him from his grave with tears? And if thou couldst, thou couldst not make him live. Therefore, have done. Some grief shows much of love, but much of grief still shows some want of wit. Feeling so the loss, yet let me weep for such a feeling loss. But now I'll tell thee, Joyful tidings, girl. And joy comes well in such a needy time. What are they, I beseech your ladyship? Well, well, thou hast a father, child, one who, to put thee from thy happiness, has sorted out a sudden day of joy that thou expects not, nor I looked not for. Madam, in happy time, what day is that? <laughs> Mary, my child, early next Thursday morn, the gallant, young, and noble gentleman, the county Paris at St. Peter's Church, shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. Now by St. Peter's Church, and Peter too, he shall not make me there a joyful bride. I, I wonder at this haste that I must wed, ere he that should be husband come to woo? I pray you tell my fort lord and father, madam, I will not marry yet. Here comes your father, tell him so yourself, and see how he will take it at your hands. How oh, now? A conduit girl, what, still in tears? Have you not delivered our decree? Ay, sir, but she will have none. She gives you thanks. I would the fool were married to her grave. Soft, take me with you, take me with you, wife. How? Will she none? Doth she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Doth she not count her blessed, unworthy as she is, that we have wrought so worthy gentlemen to be her bridegroom? Not proud you have, but thankful that you have. Proud can I never be of what I hate, but thankful even for hate that is meant for love. How now, how now? What chalk logic, what is this? Proud, and I thank you, and I thank you not. And yet not proud, mistress minion, you. Thank me no tidings, nor proud me no proud, but fret at your fine joints against Thursday next to go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag thee on a hurdle thither. Out, you green sickness, carry on, out, you baggage, you tallow face. Fie, fie, what are you, man? Good father, I beseech you on my knees, hear me with patience but to speak a word. Hang me, young baggage, disobedient wretch. I tell thee what, get thee to a church on Sunday or never after look me in the face. Wife, we scarce thought us blessed that God had lent us but only this child, but now I see this one was too much and that we have a curse in having her out on her. Hell in heaven bless her. You are to blame, my lord, to rate her so. Lady Wisdom, ooh, ooh, ooh. hold your tongue. Good prudence, smatter your gossips, go. I speak no treason. Oh God, you got in. Say not one speak. Peace, you mumbling fool. Utter your gravity or a gossip's spell, for here we need it not. You are too hot. God's blood makes me mad! Day, night, hour, tide, time, work, play. Alone in company still my care hath been to have her matched. And having now provided a gentleman of noble parentage, Thursday is near, lay hand on heart, advise. And you be mine, I'll give you to my friend. And you be not hang, beg, starve, die in the streets, for by my soul I'll ne'er acknowledge thee. Nor what is mine shall ne'er do thee good. Think to it. 
trust it. Bethink you. I would not be forsworn. Is there no pity in the clouds that sees into the bottom of my grief? Oh, sweet, my mother, cast me not away. Delay this marriage for a month, a week, or if you do not, make the bridal bed in that dim monument where Tybalt lies. Talk not to me, for I'll not speak a word. Oh. Do as thou wilt, for I have done with thee. Oh, God. Oh, nurse, how shall this be prevented? What sayest thou? Hast thou not a word of joy? Some comfort, nurse? Faith, here it is. <sighs> Romeo is banished, and all the world to nothing. I think it best you married with the county. Oh, he's a lovely gentleman. You shrew my very heart. I think you are happy in the second match, for it excels your first, or if it did not, your first is dead, or twere as good he were, as living here, and you no use of him. Speakst thou from thy heart? And from my soul, too, or else beshrew them both. Amen. What? Well, thou hast comforted me marvelous much. Go in, and tell my lady I am gone, having displeased my father to Lawrence Sell to make confession and to be absolved. Mary, I will, and this is wisely done. Ancient damnation. Oh, most wicked fiend! Is it more sin to wish me thus forsworn, or to dispraise my lord with that same tongue which she hath praised it with above compare so many thousand times? Go, counselor. Thou and my bosom henceforth must be twain. I'll to the friar to know his remedy. If all else fail, myself have power to die. On um, Thursday, sir, the... The time is very short. My father Capulet will have it so, and I am nothing slow to slack his haste. You say you do not know the lady's mind. I, uneven is the course. I like it not. Immoderately, she weeps for Tybalt's death, and therefore have I little talked of love, for Venus smiles not in the house of tears. Ah, look, sir, here comes the lady toward myself. Happily met. My lady and my wife? That may be, sir, when I may be a wife. That maybe must be love on Thursday next. What must be shall be. Yeah, that certain text. Are you at leisure, Holy Father, now? Or shall I come to you at an evening mass? My leisure serves me, pensive daughter, now. My lord, you must entreat the time alone. God shield, I should disturb devotion. Juliet. On Thursday early will I rouse ye. Till then, adieu, and keep this holy kiss. Oh, shut the door. And when thou hast done so, come with, weep with me, past hope, past cure, past help. Ah, Juliet, I already know thy grief. It strains me past the compass of my wits, I hear thou must, and nothing may prevent it. On Thursday next, be married to the county. Tell me not, friar, that thou overhearest this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. If in thy wisdom thou canst give no help, do thou but call my resolution wise, and with this knife I'll help it presently. Oh, daughter, I do spy a kind of hope, which craves as desperate an execution. Hold then, go home, be merry, give consent to marry Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow, tomorrow night look thou lie alone. Let not thy nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. Take thou this vial, being then in bed and this distilled liquor drink thou off. Like death, when he shuts 
the day of life, each part deprived of supple government shell, stiff and stark and cold appear like death. And in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death shall thou continue two and 40 hours. And then awake as if from a pleasant sleep. Thou shalt be born to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the Capulets lie. And in the meantime, against thou shalt awake, shall Romeo in my letters know our drift. And hither shall he come, and he and I shall watch thy waking. And that very night shall Romeo bear thee hence to Mantua. Oh, give me, give me, oh, tell me not of fear. Oh. It be gone strong and prosperous in this was all. I'll send a friar with speed to Mantua with my letters to thy lord. Love, give me strength, and strength shall help afford. Farewell, dear father. What? Is my daughter gone to Friar Lawrence? I forsooth. Well, he may have a chance to do some good on her. A peevish, self-willed harlotry it is. See where she comes from shrift with merry look. How now, my headstrong? Where have thou been gadding? For I have learned me to repent the sin and beg your pardon. Pardon, I beseech you. Henceforward, I am ever ruled by you. Send for the country. Go tell him of this. I'll have this knot knit up tomorrow morning. I met the youthful lord at Lauren's cell and gave him what becomed love I might not step over the bounds of modesty. Why, I'm glad on it. Tis this, tis well. Stand up. This is as it should be. Let me see the country. Aye, Mary, go, I say, and fetch him hither. Nurse, will you go with me into my closet to help me sort, sort such needful ornaments as you think fit to furnish me tomorrow? No, not till Thursday. There's time enough. Go, nurse, go with her. We'll church tomorrow. thrills my veins, it almost freezes up the heat of life. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse, what shall she do here? My dismal see, scene, I needs must act alone. Romeo, I come. How heavy do I journey on the way, when what I seek my weary travels end? Doth teach that ease and that repose to say, thus far the miles are measured from thy friend. The beast that bears me, tired with my woe, plods dully on to bear that weight in me, as if by some instinct the wretch did know his rider loved not speed, being made from thee. The bloody spur cannot provoke him on, that sometimes anger thrusts into his hide, which heavily he answers with a groan, more sharp to me than spurring to his side. For that same groan doth put this in my mind. My grief lies onward, and my joy behind. Mistress? What mistress? Juliet! Fast I warrant her she. What? Not a word? Ugh, I must needs wake her. Madam! Madam! 
Adam. <gasps> oh, alas, alas, help! Help, my lady's dead! Oh, well, a day that ever I was born! What noise is here? Oh, lamentable day! What is the matter? Look, look, oh, heavy day! Oh, oh, me, my child, my only life! Revive! Look up or I will die with thee! Help! Help! Call help! Bring Juliet forth, her lord has come. She's dead, deceased, she's dead. Alack of the day. Alack of the day, she's dead, she's dead, she's dead. Let me see her out. Alas, she's cold. Oh, lamentable day. Oh, woeful time. That hath did her hints to make me wait. Who oh, ties up my tongue? Who oh, will let me speak? May trust the flattering truth asleep. My dreams presage some joyful news at hand. My bosom's lord sits lightly in its throne, and all this day an unaccustomed spirit lifts me above the ground with cheerful thoughts. I dreamt my lady came and found me dead. Strange dream that gives a dead man leave to think. News from Verona. How now, Balthazar? Dost thou not bring letters from the fire? How is my lady? Is my father well? How fares my Juliet? That I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. Then she is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Capel's monument, and her immortal part with angels lives. I saw her laid low in her kindred's vault, and presently took post to tell it you. Even so, then I defy you, stars. I do beseech you, sir, have patience. Hast thou no letters to me from the friar? No, my good lord. Oh, no matter. Get the thing gone! Why, Julia, I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see for means. Oh, Mischief, thou art swift to enter in the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary. What ho, apothecary? Who calls so loud? Come hither, man. Let me have a dram of poison, such soon speeding gear as will disperse itself through all the veins that the life-weary taker may fall dead. Such mortal drugs I have, but Mantua's law is death to any he that mutters them. The world affords no law to make thee rich, then be not poor, but break it and take this. My poverty, but not my will, consents. I pay thy poverty and not thy will. <laughs> Put this in any liquid thing you will, and drink it all. And if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. There is thy gold, worse poison to men's souls, doing more murders in this loathsome world. Come, cordial and not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave, for there I must use thee. Holy Franciscan brother, ho! Ah, uh, the same should be Friar John. Welcome from Mantua. What says Romeo, or if this might be writ, 
give me the letter. My journey forth to Mantua was much delayed. Suspecting that we both were in a house where the infectious pestilence did reign, sealed up the doors, and would not let us forth, so that my speed to Mantua here was stayed. Who bore my letter then to Romeo? I could not send it. Here it is again. An happy fortune. By my brotherhood, the letter was not nice but full of charge. Dear import, and the neglecting it may do much danger. Friar John, go hence. Now must I to the monument alone. Within three hours, Miss Juliet will awake. Sweet flower, with flowers thy bridal bed I strew. Oh, woe, thy canopy is dust and stone with which sweat, with seat water nightly I will do, or wanting that with tears distilled by moans. The obsequies that I for thee will keep nightly shall be to strew thy grave and weep. Give me that mattock and the wrenching iron. I will be gone, sir, and not trouble you. So shalt thou show me friendship. Take thou that, live and be prosperous, and farewell, good fellow. For all the same, I'll hide me hereabout. His looks I fear, and his intents I doubt. Thou detestable ma, thou womb of death, gorged with the dearest morsel of the earth, thus I enforce thy rotten jaws to open. And in despite, I'll cram thee with more food. Stop thy unhallowed toil, vile Montague. Can vengeance be pursued further than death? Condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey and go with me, for thou must die. I must indeed, and therefore came I hither. Good gentle youth, tempt not a desperate man. Stay not. Be gone, live, and hereafter say, a madman's mercy bade thee run. Away! I do defy thy conjurations, and apprehend thee for a felon here. Will thou provoke me? <laughs> Have at thee, boy! Oh, Lord, they fight! I will go call the watch! I am slain! My love, my wife, death that had sucked the honey of thy breath hath no power yet upon thy beauty. Thou art not conquered, beauty's in sign yet is crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks, and death's pale flag is not advanced there. Tybalt, liest thou there in thy bloody sheet? <sighs> what more favor can I do to thee than with that hand that cuts thy youth in twain to sunder his that was thine enemy? Forgive me, my cousin. <laughs> Dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous and that the lean, abhorred monster keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour? For fear of that, I still will stay with thee and never from this palace of dim light depart again. Here, here will I remain with worms that are thy chambermaids. Oh. Here will I set up my everlasting rest and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world-wearied flesh. I look your last arms. Take your last embrace and lips. Oh, you the doors of breath seal with a righteous kiss. A dateless bargain to engrossing death. Ears. 
to my love. Oh, true. What is this that stains the stony entrance of the sepulchre? What means this masterless and gory sword still I discolored by this place of peace? Romeo. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> what Paris do and steeped in blood? Oh, what an unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance. <laughs> a lady stirs. Oh, comfortable friar. Where is my lord? I do remember well where I should be, and here I am. Where's my Romeo? I hear some noise. Lady, come from that nest of death, contagion, and unnatural sleep, a greater power than we can contradict hath thwarted our intents. Come, come away, thy husband in thy bosom there lies dead, and Paris too. Come, I'll dispose of thee among a sisterhood of holy nuns. Stay not to question, for the watch is coming. Come, go, good Juliet. I dare no longer stay. Go get thee hence, for I will not away. Oh, oh, what's here? A cup closed in my true love's hand. Poison I see hath been his timeless end. Oh, churl drunk all and left no friendly drop to help me. I will kiss thy lips. Happily some poison yet doth hang on them to make die with a restorative. Oh, thy lips are warm. Yea, noise, then I'll be brief. Oh, happy dagger, this is thy sheath. There rust and let me die. What misadventure is so early up that calls our person from our morning's rest? What should it be that they shriek abroad? The pe people in the street cry, Romeo, some Juliet and some Paris, and all run with open outcry towards our monument. What fear is this which startles in our ears? Oh, sovereign, here lies the county Paris slain at and Romeo dead, and Juliet dead before, warm and new killed. Search, seek, and know how this foul murder comes. Ah, here is a friar, and and slaughtered Romeo's man with, with instruments upon them, fit to open men's tombs. Oh, heavens. Oh, wife, look how our daughter bleeds. This dagger hath been stain for... Lo, his house is empty on the back of Montague, and it is mis-sheathed in my daughter's bosom. Oh me, this sight of death is a bell that warns my old age to a sepulchre. Oh, come, Montague, for thou art early up to see thy son and heir more early down. Alas, my liege, my wife is dead tonight. Grief of my son's exile has stopped her breath. What further woe conspires against mine age? Look, and thou shalt see. O thou and heart, what manners is in this, to press before thy father to a grave? Seal up the mouth of outrage for a while, till we can clear these ambiguities, and know their spring, their head, their true descent. And then I 
Will I be the general of your woes and lead you even to death? Meantime, forbear and let mischance be slave to patience. Bring forth the parties of suspicion. Here I stand, both to impeach and purge myself condemned and myself excused. Then say at once what thou dost know in this. I will be brief, for my short stay of breath is not so long in a tedious tale. Romeo, they're dead, was husband to that Juliet, and she, there dead, was Romeo's faithful wife. I married them, and stolen their marriage day was Tybalt's doomsday, whose untimely death banished the new made bridegroom from the city for whom, and not for Tybalt, Juliet grieved. You, to remove that siege of grief from her, betrothed and would have married her perforce to County Paris, and then she comes to me. And with wild looks bid me devise some means to rid her from the second marriage, or in myself she would there kill herself. Then I gave her, so tutored in my art, a sleeping potion which so took effect as I intended, for it wrought on her the form of death. And therefore I wrote to Romeo <laughs> that he should come hither on this dire night to help take her from this borrowed grave, being the potion's force should cease, but he which bore my letter, Friar John, was stayed by accident, and yesternight I turned my letter back. At the prefixed hour of her waking came I to take her, from her kindred's vault, meaning to keep her closely in my cell till conveniently I could send for Romeo. But when I came, some minute ere the time of her awakening, here untimely lay Romeo and the noble Paris dead. She wakes, I entreated her to come forth and bear this work of heaven with patience, but then, A noise did scare me from the tomb, and she too desperate would not go with me. But it seems did violence on herself. Where's Romeo's man? What can he say in this? I, uh, I brought my master news of Juliet's death, and then in post he came from Antua. This tale doth make good the friar's words. Their course of love, the tidings of her death. Where be these enemies? Capulet, Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate. That heaven finds means to kill your joys with love. And I, for winking at your discords, do have lost a brace of kinsmen. All are punished. Oh, Brother Montague, give me thy hand. This is my daughter's jointure, but no more than I can demand. But I can give thee more. I will raise her statue in pure gold, that while Verona by that name is known, there shall no figure at such rate be set as that of true and faithful Juliet. As rich shall Romeo's be by his lady's lie, Poor sacrifices for our enmity. A glooming peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned, and some shall be punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and we're Romeo.